Well, good morning again, Emmanuel Church. Thank you for being here today. Um, it's a blessing to have you here. We need to worship and praise God. Our souls need someone to worship and praise, and that someone needs to be the Lord God who created and made us uh, uh, into the people that we are, and now he wants to recreate us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I just want to share with you, uh, internet family and friends as well, that much, a lot of God's word is to those who believe. Some of God's word is those to those who don't believe. And uh, so just keep, keeping that in mind, we want to thank God that uh, he's using our Emmanuel Church to, uh, uh, to touch people's lives. I know over 100 and, uh, I can't remember, 100 and, 50 people viewed our, our videotapes that, that we play, that we do every week. Not just the one, but there's like over 100 that people are still viewing. And so you're a part of that. And we thank you for your donations. We thank you for your support, your attendance, because you are part of touching those people's lives with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And Internet Family and Friends, we encourage you to, to join a church and to please use your gifts and talents in, in, a, in, in a church near you that you can be blessed by God and, be, and glorify God in the use of your spiritual gifts. Well, let's uh, bow in prayer as we go before our God and seek his wisdom and knowledge. Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you and praising you for who you are. We thank you, dear God, for your mercy, grace, and truth. We cannot reach you, no matter how hard we work, no matter how good we try to be, no matter what we do, we cannot reach you. You came down to reach us. You, Father, you sent your son Jesus to redeem us. He's the one that showed us how to live by faith and trust in what he did for us on the cross. Only, only you can forgive us of our sins. Only you can reshape us and mold us into the persons we need to be that we may need, that we may be perfect enough to be in your heaven. And the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is what did that for us. And our faith and trust in him, inviting him to be our Savior and Lord. We pray, dear God, for our internet family and friends. We pray for our church. We pray for those that are not here today, that you would touch their hearts and lives and move them into uh, a intimate close relationship with you that they may feel your mighty presence in their lives as well as for us so father we come before you thanking you and praising you for all that you do and are going to do and are still doing in each of our lives we pray dear god that we be yielded and surrendered to you that you can mold us and shape us into your likeness because we pray this and ask this in the powerful name of the glorious name, the righteous name, the masterful craft, crafter's name, whose name, church? In Jesus', Jesus name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, before we get into the, the main topic of do you know 12 things that God cannot do? Can you believe that? There's things that God cannot do. But before we get into that, let's do a review of last week. And last week is, were, are you rich in God's mercy? Now, as believers, again, this is to believers. As believers, you and I are examples of God's exceeding grace and kindness. The kindness that he gave towards us, both now and in heaven. Because by his magnificent works, he saved us, shaped us, molded us, and then sat us in his heavenly kingdom. So, picture this. You're in heaven. And you've trusted Christ as Lord and Savior. You've been born again. When we're in heaven, we'll be sitting there, and the angels will walk by and say, Look at those formerly evil, wretched people. Look at what Yahweh God did for them. He made them new creations of his holiness by the blood of Jesus through his grace. And he took them out of darkness and brought them into his marvelous kingdom of light. Amen? That's a quote by Dr. J. Vernon McGee. In Ephesians 2, 8, it says it this way. God saved you by his grace when you believed. When you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and trusted him as Lord and Savior. You can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Amen? Blank. What's that blank? Salvation. 
Thank you, Sarah. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. <coughs> Excuse me. So that none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew, born again in Christ Jesus, so that we can do the good things he planned. Well, I almost said it. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. That he planned for us long ago. Now, according to Dr. Bernie McGee, we are not saved by God's love. Although love is very much a part of it, we are saved by his grace, Yahweh God's undeserved favor, and his willingness to intervene into our dirty, sinful lives to regenerate and sanctify us. Why did he do this? Because he loves us. He sent Jesus to reconcile us to him, but it is grace that saves us. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is his intervention into our, our lives. We need God's intervention to help us through our lives so that we can thrive in this world and in the kingdom to come. You and I, who are born again, are masterpieces of God in progress. He's still working on each one of us. We are being transformed into the likeness of Jesus so that we can be perfect citizens of his perfect heaven and to be in his perfect presence. God gracefully intervened into our lives. That's what grace is. So, so, so listen here. When trials and tribulations come into your life, do not be dismayed or discouraged. Anybody dismayed or discouraged this week? Nope. Good. But if you are discouraged or dismayed, remember, you are under construction by the mighty hands of Yahweh God. Look at what Jeremiah says. We sang a song about the potter's hand. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah, and he said, Go down to the potter's shop, and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me, and I found the what? Potter. Thank you. I found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay and did what? He started over again. Thank you, church. Now this is a picture of you and I. It's a picture of each of us, of all of us. God is starting over with all of us. Jeremiah 18.5 says, Then the Lord gave me this message, O Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? Thank you, Pastor Ray. As the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So remember, trials and tribulations are to bring us closer to him. But we need to surrender and submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and his plan. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but that nation renounces its what? Evil ways. His evil ways. Thank you. I will not destroy it as I had planned. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then that nation turns to evil and refuses to what? Thank you, Linda. Obey me. I will not bless it as I said I would. <coughs> so, in Isaiah 64, 8, it says, But now, O Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter, and we are all the work of your hands. hands. As Yahweh God is and will make Israel a nation who loves Messiah Jesus so that they can thrive, he also wants to make us and all his people, his born-again children, the very best that we can be so that we can also thrive here on earth and in the kingdom of heaven. So the question for us is, will we surrender to the Lord our God, our potter, and let him have his absolute way in our lives so that we can become the masterpieces he created us to be and always wanted us to be? So the challenge is to be in God's word. Every day, morning, noon, and night. The challenge is how long will we casually treat Yahweh God's call for us to be completely sold out for Jesus and instead be on fire for the Lord God Jesus? Will we, by our love decision, and it's a decision, and the power of the Holy Spirit encouraging us, strengthening us, 
when we yield to the formation of our lives by the mighty, caring, powerful, loving, masterful hands of Yahweh God, by letting Him make and shape every facet of our lives. When we do, when we do this, this is when we will understand the full impact of grace and be rich in God's mercy. Amen? Amen. Amen. So today's message is, do you know 12 things God cannot do? Anybody? Anybody think about that? Right. First, let us define what a sovereign God is. And then answer the question of what a sovereign God, Yahweh God, cannot do. The definition of a sovereign God or sovereignty is one that exercises supreme and permanent authority, especially in a nation or other governmental unit, or in this case, the entire universe. Yahweh God is the supreme commander over all that he has created, and God has get this unlimited power over all things, including you and me. In Psalm 115.3, it says, Our God is in the heavens, and he does all that he pleases. Thank you. Good job. All that he pleases. In Psalm 135.6, Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth. on earth. Good job. And in the seas and all of the deeps. Proverbs 16, 33 says, The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every what? Thank you, Linda. Every decision is from the Lord. This is, now, here's an explanation. This is the reason why the casting of lots in the Old Testament was sanctioned in Israel for certain cases of decision-making. That is in Leviticus 16.8, Joshua 8.16, and verse 8, uh, 1 Chronicles 25.8. It was understood that the outcomes were controlled by God and the seemingly random procedure eliminated human influence. The last time this ritual, although it was mentioned in the Bible, is in the choice of Matthias to replace Judas in Acts 1.26. Now, many scholars believe that the filling of the Holy Spirit in, at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 officially put an end to, this, to the, this ritual because it was then replaced by the direct guidance of the Holy Spirit. In a true believer, in a true born-again believer, it's the Holy Spirit that guides us, not casting lots. Amen? And this is a quote by uh, the uh, English... Standard Version Bible. So it is, it is the Holy Spirit's presence in us that guides us directly. We don't need to go to a, a psychic because the Lord God is our, is our guidance. We should always seek God's perfect will through Him and, and through Jesus. We don't need to go to astrological science. God is our, is our guidance. In Isaiah 45, 7, it says, I am the Lord and there is no other. I, now get this, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create what? Calamity. 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 What is calamity? Trouble. I create trouble. I create uh, trials and tribulations. I, the Lord, do these things. It says, rain down you heavens from above and let the skies pour down what? Thank you, Pastor. Righteousness. Let the earth open. Open. Let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Our God is a powerfully sovereign God. God put a curse on the earth. I don't know if you remember this. God put a curse on all of creation, including you and me. Not to destroy us, but to bring us back to Him. To bring us back to Him. To bring us into a closer, intimate relationship with Him. Why do good things, or why do bad things happen to good people? To draw them even closer to Him. In Daniel 4, 34, it says, at, at, after this time had passed, now this is a story about Nebuchadnezzar. He was a king, a, 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 a very powerful king. But then he got too arrogant. He thought all his, that, that all that was been, all of his kingdom, that he created it. 
and he did not give God the honor. And this is what happened to him. After, uh, <clears throat> what happened to Nebuchadnezzar is God struck him and made him like an animal, a hairy animal, and he ate grass of the field for seven years. For seven years. And then this is what happened after the seven years. After this time had passed, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven. My sanity returned. You want to know where uh, mental health comes? It comes from God. My sanity returned. I praised and worshipped the Most High and honored the one who lives forever. His rule is everlasting. everlasting. Thank you, church. And his kingdom is eternal. All the people of the earth are nothing compared to him. He does as he pleases, as he pleases among the angels of heaven and among the people of earth. No one can stop him or say to him, what do you mean by doing these things? things. Thank you again, church. Through these few verses, and there are many more, we see Yahweh God can do anything because he is the powerfully sovereign God of the universe. In Ephesians 1.11 it says, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the what? Anybody know what that word is? The, the, the what? Counsel. Yes, good job, good job. The counsel of his will. It is in the counsel of God's will that God allows rebellion of his creation without diminishing his sovereignty. You get that? In Isaiah 1 2, it says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. God, in this verse, laments that even though he has nourished his children, they have rebelled against him. Also, in Luke 11 30, his religious leaders of, of the day, his religious counselors, the the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sad and Sadducees, uh, his religious counsels of his law did this. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized or immersed in him, in his truth. They made up their own version of truth. So therefore, Yahweh God allows sin in the counsel of his sovereign will. He allows mm -hmm. sin. You want to know why so many bad things are happening? It's not because God wanted them to happen. It's because he's allowing man to be evil. But he, his will will be done. So we see how powerful Yahweh God is. And he does enormous miracles in the creation of life. It's a, it's a, it's a miracle what God has done. Absolute stunning miracle. The creation of galaxies, of planets, Resources of great intelligence. intelligence. So how can we even fathom, with all the things that God has done, how can we even fathom that there are things Yahweh God cannot do? Well, what are the things that an all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God cannot do? Well, because our God, Yahweh God, is supernaturally holy. Did you get this? He is supernaturally holy and supernaturally good all the time, he cannot do, and here it is, he cannot do evil, he cannot tempt others to do evil, he cannot lie, he cannot cheat, he cannot steal, he cannot sin, he cannot change, he cannot be mistaken or make a mistake, he cannot break a promise, he cannot break his word, the Bible, he cannot stop loving his children, his born-again children, who are saved by his grace. And he cannot let anyone into heaven who does not believe in Jesus' finishes, finished work on the cross of Calvary and receiving him as Lord and Savior. God's holiness does not allow him to be evil in any way. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad God cannot do evil? Aren't you glad that that for his born-again people, that he works all things to your good, even the trials and tribulations that, that are heavy and seem bad to you and to me. He works them for our good. He's drawing us and pulling us to him. 
Because of Yahweh God's absolute holiness, it is impossible for God to do evil, to cause others to, to do evil, or even to entice anyone into evil. Let no one say, and here's the scripture verse, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own what? Desires. Yes, thank you. Good job. And enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to what? Death. What? Death. Sin. Sin. And then sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. death. James 1, 13 and 14. So we cannot blame God or anyone else for our sins. The devil doesn't make you do it. We alone are at fault for our sinful behaviors, which starts in the thoughts of our formerly corrupted minds and fleshly soul. So, God cannot do evil. God cannot lie, because he is absolute truth. In John 17, 3, it says, And this is the way to eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. In John 17, 17, it says, Make them holy, pure, righteous, by your truth, teach them your word, which is truth. All of God's word, the Bible, is always true when correctly interpreted and understood. This is why God has to, get, has to give us a new mind, a new heart, a new soul, a new spirit, through a born-again rebirth of our spirits that were dead. As Pastor Ray alluded this morning, we were dead in our trespasses and sin. We were alienated from God. We were separated from God. But it is with our new spirit, our new nature, that we are reconnected with God's spirit of truth. Ephesians 2, 1 says this way, And you he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions. Thank you, Stacy. Your transgressions and sins. So God is absolutely true. He cannot lie. He is truth. God cannot cheat or steal. Because guess what? God alone owns everything. We don't own our house, our car, our clothes. They all belong to him. In Psalm uh, 24, 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and everything. everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it in, in on the ocean depths. God cannot steal or steal when it all belongs to him anyway. Amen? God cannot sin again because of his holiness. God is supremely sacred. 1 Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, Be holy, for I, Yahweh God, am holy. Psalm 99.5 says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. God cannot change, because if he had to change, then he could not be perfect. When you're perfect, you don't have to change. God is perfectly holy, so he cannot change, or he would not be holy, he would not be perfect. Malachi 3.6 says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob, as he uh, was talking to Israel. In Hebrews 13 a, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus does not change either because Jesus is also God. He is God. God cannot be mistaken or make a mistake. Has In Romans 8.18 it says this, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. 
For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children, his born-again children, really are. Now here, listen to this. Against its will, all of creation was subjected to God's curse. So there was a curse on all the earth. A curse on all of us. But not because he, he wanted to destroy us, but because he was trying to pull us back to him. Because we walked away from him. But with eager hope against our against our our will, troubling things happen to us. You and I have all experienced troubling things that have happened to us. But when we submit to God's plan, we will see his goodness. God's curse was designed to try to bring us through our own will to accept him and to love him. It was designed to bring us to his holiness through our surrender to his will and to his way and to his plan. In Romans 8, 21, it says it this way. The creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. Do you know why we're getting old? Because of the curse. Do you know why things wear out? Because of the curse. Do you, do you know why everything breaks down? Because of the curse. And the curse was designed not to harm us, but to, again, to pull us and to draw us to him. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the what? Present. Right now. To right now. And we believers also groan. We also groan even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. Suffering. Anybody suffering in your bodies? Aches and pains? We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as adopted children, including this, the new bodies he has promised us. Amen? And then here's, here's the, uh, the final line, Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes everything, everything to work together for good to those who love God, and on the call according to Thank you, Stacy. To his purpose for them, for us. So here it is. That doctor's diagnosis of you having cancer, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, are still all of God's plan to work all things for your and my good. Amen. So the question is. Can we bring calamity or trouble on ourselves that God did not purpose? Can we? The answer is yes. But he still will work the self-inflicted tragedy out for our good if we then submit to his plans. In Jeremiah 18, 7, it says, I announced that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed. But when that nation renounces, it's what? Good job, good job. Thank you, Sierra. I will not destroy it as I had planned. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not what? Bless. Bless. Thank you, Pastor Rick. I will not bless it as I said I would. This is true for nations, and this is true for us as individuals. Every one of us. Every one of us. God told King David that David was a man after his own heart. But then David committed adultery with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. Bathsheba became pregnant, and David tried to get Uriah to have relations with his wife, but Uriah wouldn't do it. David did this to try to cover up the adultery and the pregnancy. So David had Uriah killed. Because of what David did, God was very upset with David and put great trouble on David's family. 2 Samuel 11, 9 says, Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this terrible deed? This is God speaking to David. 
For you have murdered Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the Ammonites and stolen his wife. From this time on, your family will live by the sword because you have what? Despise me. Despise me. Thank you, Pastor Ray. Despise me by taking Uriah's wife to be your own. So God pronounced judgment on David, and there was great turmoil in David's family from then on. There was rape, then murder in David's family. Then David's son Absalom tried to take David's kingship from him and from Solomon. However, God still had mercy on David because the Lord God could have taken David's life. And God still kept his promise to David that a Messiah would come out of David's lineage. Our sovereign God never makes a mistake. So God cannot break a promise or a covenant. In Psalms 89, 33, it says, But I, Yahweh, will never stop loving him, He's talking about David, nor fail to keep my promise to him. No, I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I said. I have sworn an oath to David, and in my holiness I cannot lie, nor did God break any promises. God cannot break his written word, the Bible. His word will last forever. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth, as we now know, will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Again, speaking about the Bible. In 1 Peter 1, 24, it says, All flesh, you and I, is as grass, and all the glory of man as a flower of grass. We sang a song this morning. As a, flo as a flower quickly fades. The grass withers, the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. So every prophecy of the Bible will be fulfilled. All of God's word will come to truth and is truth. Now if you are a born again child of God, God cannot stop ever loving you as a born again child of God. Psalm 103, 17 says, but the, love, but the love of the Lord remains forever and with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children, of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. Thank you, church. And in Romans, I think it's 8, 38. I have the wrong address there. Um, There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing on the earth, heaven above, the earth beneath, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God when we are his children. Is that a hallelujah, church? Amen. God cannot, and here's the last one, God cannot let into heaven anyone who does not believe in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. In John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You cannot get to heaven except through the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, not only that, <clears throat> but no prayer that you pray will get to heaven unless it's a prayer to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it has to go through Jesus. No other prayers will be answered by the Father. In John 8, 23, it says, And he, Jesus, said to them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins if you do not believe that I am he, the Messiah, the God that came from, from heaven to take on human flesh. You will die in your sins. No one enters heaven except by faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord. So in conclusion, because Yahweh God cannot do evil, he cannot tempt others to do evil, he does not lie, he does not cheat, he does not steal, he does not sin, he does not change, he does not make mistakes, he does not break a promise, he always keeps his word in, in the Bible, 
He cannot stop loving his children. He cannot let into heaven anyone who does not believe in, in Jesus' finished work on the cross and receive him as Lord and Savior. We are to be, this is what we should be, we are to be exceedingly grateful, blessed, assured, confident that we can trust God with all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our minds, forever and ever. We can trust and surrender to God all of our lives infinitely more than we can trust even ourselves. You cannot trust yourself. So let us encourage each other to be more faithful and submitted to our Yahweh God. And let us do it together. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you and praising you that there are enormous things that you do do, but then there are things that you cannot do because of your holiness, because of your goodness, because of your love, because you are love and you are full of grace. And we thank you, dear Father, for loving us and sharing for us. We thank you, dear God, for giving us your plan of salvation. We thank you for giving us the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we just pray for our internet family and friends that they too would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior and walk closely with you, dear God. And our Emmanuel Church, the same, that we would walk closely with the Lord Jesus Christ and that we would love one another as you have loved us as a church body, and that we would hold on to each other, lean on each other, and care for one another as you have cared for us. Thank you, Father, for loving us and caring for us. Because we pray this, we ask this, we believe this in the powerful name, the righteous name, the loving name, the caring name, the masterful name. Whose name, church, do we pray? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for spending time with us today. But remember, please spend time in the presence of the Lord God, being intimate with Him, praying, reading His Word, and applying His Word to your lives. Because in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. And let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he knows and understands me, Yahweh God. Because he is the Lord, he exercises loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. For in these he delights in, says the Lord. Let us adopt these principles daily in our lives that the Lord's grace may always be upon you and me. God bless you and may you be completely enthralled in the love of God that he has for you.